This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. A fully expended Falcon Heavy ascended from Florida. That launch has partially delayed Axiom 2, and Issa's juice has a stuck antenna. It's Friday the 5th of May, and there's much more to come this week in Spaceflight. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Siegel for NSF, and welcome to This Week in Spaceflight, where we recap the latest news and launches that have happened during the week. Starting off with the launches this week, we had all SpaceX launches! First up was the launch of a Falcon 9 rocket with two O3BM Power Internet satellites for SES. Liftoff occurred on April 28th at 2212 UTC from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. The booster for that mission, B-1078, was flying for a second time, and it landed successfully on SpaceX's drone ship Just Read the Instructions. The two payloads of the mission are part of SES's O3BM power constellation of high-throughput internet satellites. These will join two previous satellites, also launched by SpaceX last year. Two more are set for launch in June, followed by another two in the fourth quarter of this year. The last three are scheduled to launch next year for a total of 11 satellites on the Constellation, all launched by SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets. As Falcon 9 put the O3BM power satellites into their deployment orbit, SpaceX was preparing to launch a Falcon Heavy rocket just next door from Launch Complex 39A. Lightning and weather had delayed the mission and put both launches within just two hours of each other. However, at T-59 seconds, Falcon Heavy's onboard computers aborted the count and SpaceX had to try again this time on Sunday. After an opening in the weather, Falcon Heavy finally lifted off on May 1st at 26 minutes past midnight UTC from Kennedy Space Center, carrying the Viasat 3 America satellite along with two rideshare payloads. If you saw our live stream covering the launch, which I hope you did, you probably saw that this was the first Falcon Heavy with fully expendable boosters. However, SpaceX did attempt to recover the fairing halves using their recovery vessel named Duck. SpaceX later shared a video of the re-entry on Twitter, as seen from one of the fairing halves. Definitely stick around our Space Coast Live stream to find out how toasty they are once Doug comes back to port in just a few days. The reason why the boosters are fully expendable was due to the high-mass, high-energy requirements needed for the mission. The three payloads for this mission, Viasat 3 Americas, Arcturus, and G-Space 1, were all inserted directly into near-geostationary orbit, and their total mass was likely just a bit over 6.5 tons. Viasat 3 Americas, the main payload for the mission, is a massive satellite built by Boeing for Viasat to provide broadband connectivity across North and South America, hence the name. If you want to find out more information about this and the other payloads, be sure to check out the overview article on our website, written by Justin Davenport. Another week, another Starlink mission, as usual! On May 4th at 7.31 UTC, SpaceX launched another batch of Starlink satellites on board a Falcon 9 rocket. The mission, Starlink Group 56, deployed another 56 satellites for Starlink's second-generation constellation, bringing the total of Starlinks in orbit to 4,000. The booster, B-1069, was flying for a seventh time and successfully landed on the drone ship a short fall of Gravitas. The launch now marks SpaceX's 30th mission of the year, so 70 more to go to reach their goal of 100 launches in 2023. Axiom's second crewed mission to the ISS has been delayed. The reason? The ISS visiting vehicle schedule, SpaceX's own schedule, and solar panels. The Axiom 2 mission was scheduled for launch early this month, but this week, NASA and Axiom announced that they were no longer looking at opportunities in that time frame. The mission is set to launch on a Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A, the same pad where the Viasat 3 Americas mission took place just a few days ago. The repeated delays of that Falcon Heavy mission put a constraint on how soon Axiom 2 could be launched, as SpaceX now needs to convert the transporter erector at LC-39A into Falcon 9 configuration. Then the company will also have to carry out the launch rehearsals and tests that are normal for a crewed mission. This would all be okay if it weren't for the fact that there's another Dragon mission, a cargo mission, scheduled for early June, carrying a new set of solar arrays for the ISS. NASA says this delivery has to occur in that early June timeframe in order to install the solar panels before the mission comes back to Earth in the middle of July. 
And that's because there's yet another vehicle, Boeing Starliner spacecraft, that's set to launch to the ISS and will take up the only free docking port on that side of the station. But even if Starliner wasn't ready to be launched by then, SpaceX also has a high priority national security mission set for launch in July on a Falcon Heavy rocket, which means it would have to juggle the missions around to find a slot to launch Axiom 2. So it all seems that unless SpaceX can pull off a scheduling miracle, we might be looking at a few months delay for this mission, and all because of the crazy times we live in where SpaceX is going wild with launches and we're seeing more and more vehicles arriving at the station. And now I think DOS has something to say about today's sponsor. Take it away, DOS! Look, at NSF, we try to be picky about who we actually talk about on our channel, the products we share with you. So when a company called Rocket Money comes ringing, we answer. I mean, I like rockets, I like money, and I'm pretty sure I signed up for a couple subscriptions like two years ago that I forgot about and they keep charging me for every month. I mean, think about it. You spend so much time trying to make money, but how much time do you spend trying to save money? Rocket Money can help you out with that. Here's what they do. You install the Rocket Money app on your phone, set up an account, and then let it get to work. If you let it take a peek at your bills, Rocket Money can actually identify recurring payments and ask you if you want to keep them. The subscription that I forgot about? Bam! Taken care of just by clicking on it. Or by uploading a photo and tapping a button, Rocket Money can help you negotiate lower bills. Like, I have fiber now. Somebody should probably tell my cable company that. Rocket Money can also help you set up a savings account. Like say you're trying to save for retirement on a llama farm one day. By the way, did you know that llamas can spit up to 10 feet? They're not actually spitting at you. They actually throw up in their mouth a little bit and then they spit that at you. So maybe instead of saving for a llama farm, you should retire on the Space Coast and just watch rocket launches. So anyways, I thought I'd give it a try. I installed it on my phone to see what it could do for me. If you want to do the same, click the link in the description, go to rocketmoney.com slash NSF, or scan the QR code. Does anybody actually scan QR codes anymore? Let me know in the comments if you know how to scan a QR code, or we're able to make this one work. In any event, Rocket Money has over 3.4 million members and counting. Quite a few people have signed up so that they can get help saving money. So maybe check it out. Back to the video. Well, for all of you who bravely venture out to watch these launches in person and then get hit with delays, speaking from experience, you all could probably benefit from saving a few bucks. So, hey, check out Rocket Money. The European Space Agency's JUICE spacecraft might be in a bit of trouble. The spacecraft's Radar for Icy Moons Exploration, or RIME, antenna was supposed to deploy over the first week following its launch last month. However, it was stuck midway through deployment, and now ESA scientists are trying to devise a plan to loosen it. Their current hypothesis is that a small release pin has not in fact been released, and it's keeping the antenna at that halfway point through its deployment. However, every day the antenna is showing signs that it's becoming looser, so the engineers will literally shake juice to see if the pin finally releases and the antenna deployment sequence can be finalized. This shake would be done by performing an engine burn with Juice's main engine, followed by a rotation to make the sun illuminate and heat up the pin to loosen it. Once deployed, the 16-meter antenna would allow Juice to scan through the ice of the icy moons of Jupiter using radar, allowing scientists to better understand the changes on the surface and subsurface of those celestial bodies. So here's hoping ESA shakes the juice and the rhyme comes loose. The International Space Station has gained a new science airlock. Launched 13 years ago on the STS-132 mission, this airlock had been stored all this time on the outside of the Rosviet module, awaiting for the launch of the Russian Naoka module. This week, after a long wait, Russian cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin exited the ISS and helped prepare and connect the new airlock to Naoka. The process involved the use of the European robotic arm, which grappled the airlock and brought it into the docking port reserved for it on Naoka. The robotic arm was set to autonomously berth the new airlock, but in the first attempt for that, the interfaces between the airlock and Naoka were out of alignment. With the help of cosmonaut Patelin, the airlock was manually put into the correct alignment on the interface, and it was successfully berthed to Naoka on May 4th at 58 minutes past midnight UTC. The airlock will be used to deploy experiments from the inside of Naoka and expose them to the vacuum of space. The cosmonauts will be using the European robotic arm to deploy and install the airlock from Naoka, finally bringing the science capabilities of the Russian module to its full capacity. Electron's next launch carrying two NASA weather satellites gets delayed because of weather. Fate loves irony, or so they say. 
The mission had been originally scheduled for launch on May 1st from New Zealand. We even talked about it on last week's episode. But weather got in the way, and Rocket Lab had to move the launch to a later time. NASA's Tropics satellite constellation originally consisted of six satellites and was planned to launch on Astra's Rocket 3.3 last year. However, the first mission suffered a launch failure that resulted in the loss of the first two satellites. Due to that, and Astra abandoning Rocket 3.3, NASA made the decision to put the launch of the remaining four satellites up for bid to find a new launcher. Rocket Lab won that bid with Electron, and hopefully, if weather clears, it'll be able to finally deploy the first two Tropics satellites in just a few days from now. Another launch with the remaining two satellites is expected to occur a few weeks after. Here's what we've got to look forward to next week. If all the ISS crew and cargo schedule drama wasn't enough for you, on May 6th, the SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor will be relocated from one side of the station to another to support the upcoming SpaceX CRS-28 mission. This Cargo Dragon mission should launch next month, and it'll be carrying a new set of ISS rollout solar arrays in its trunk. The ISS robotic arm can't reach inside of Dragon's trunk when it's docked to the front docking port of the ISS Harmony module. However, it can when it's docked to the Zenith port. So this weekend, all four members of the Crew-6 mission will board Endeavour for a roughly 40-minute trip from one port to the other. Talk about juggling parking spots. Next week, we also have back-to-back -back Starlink launches. The missions, Starlink Group 59 and Starlink Group 29, will launch from both coasts of the United States. China is set to launch the Tianzhou-6 cargo mission to their space station next week. Launch of the Chongzheng-7 rocket with the cargo spacecraft is set to occur on May 10th at 1350 UTC from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center in China. The spacecraft will likely dock two to six hours later to the Chinese space station, where it will be carrying about six tons of cargo. Prior to that docking, we should also expect the undocking of the Tianzhou-5 spacecraft from the station to make way for this new cargo craft. And that's your weekly recap of all things spaceflight. Don't forget to head over to rocketmoney.com slash NSF to start saving money today. We'll see you all next week to recap this week in spaceflight.